Hey, Sarah. another minute let a few other people join us if you have a black or a blanket maybe a rolled up towel that will be helpful for tonight So why don't we find ourselves coming to our mats, starting off in a comfortable seat, finding those sits bones, coming onto the mat, the earth, whatever, whatever surface you choose to sit on. Legs can be crossed, maybe stacked, maybe out long in front of you. Starting to build that length in the spine, shoulders down, away from the ears. Allowing yourself here to close the eyes. Let whatever is going on around you, whether it's outside of the room that you are in, outside of your home, in the room you're in, whatever noises, smells, you hear, you feel. Just let it all go for the next 45 minutes. Allow yourself to be in your body. Notice what it feels like to be in your skin. I want to share a reading with you as we settle into our mat about making a daily gratitude list. Appreciate the richness of your life by weaving the feeling of gratitude into your entire day. When you wake up in the morning, make a mental list of five people or things for which you are grateful. Take a few minutes to think about each entry on your list. You might feel grateful toward a particular person or for a positive event that you experienced. You may feel good about one of your talents or accomplishments. You may simply feel thankful for the sun pouring in your window or for your breakfast. This simple gratitude practice can set an appreciative tone for how you will move through the world today. I think more than ever with what's going on in our lives, it's important to be grateful for the things that we do have. Letting go of the feelings and the thoughts of the things and the moments and the places that we could be or that we don't have. And just focus on what goodness we have today. And while focusing on that goodness, if you can, bring your lips to seal and just start to find those inhales and exhales. Traveling in and out of the nose. Focusing on that breath, traveling deep down into those lower abdominals, filling all the way up. Maybe that belly button presses away from the spine, expanding as you exhale that belly button back into neutral. Continuing to breathe really deep into this lower belly region, filling up with that breath and then letting it go. Maybe focusing on that gratitude as your mind may be tempted to wander throughout your practice tonight, and that's okay. Invite it to come back with maybe a moment of feeling of gratitude. That gratitude can be so simply as being able to practice on your mat, Focusing on lengthening out that breath. Maybe adding a count of four or five. Filling all the way up. And then letting it go. 
On your next inhale, blink the eyes open as we sweep the arms up toward the sky. Exhale, right hand comes behind that right hip, left hand on that right knee as you twist open to the right, gazing back over that right shoulder. Inhale brings you up through center. Exhale, right hand on the left knee, left hand behind that left hip, twisting open toward that opposite side. Inhale, coming back up. Exhale, that right hand comes, decks that right hip. Reach those left fingertips over, opening up that left side body. Pull that left shoulder back, maybe even gazing up toward the sky. Inhale, back through center. And then exhale, find that side bend on the opposite side. Pull that shoulder back. Inhale, rising up. This time both hands will come back behind you. Fingertips point in toward the hips. Crown of the head can stay lifted, finding just that slight back bend, or if you'd like more, allow that crown to fall toward the back of the room. Inhale, lift that crown of the head if you allow it to drop, walking those hands back forward, and then we'll walk the fingertips out toward I'll walk toward you, you walk toward me as we find that forward fold. Slowly dragging those fingertips back toward you, rising back up. We'll set up for our first sequence of yin poses in a forward fold. So the total sequence of this will take about six minutes. So we'll start off reaching out that right leg, excuse me. Nope, reaching that left leg out nice and long. Bring the sole of that right foot into the inside of that left thigh, sitting up nice and straight, feeling that pelvis as we're just going to begin to tilt it, walking the hands out in front of us, finding ourselves coming into a half forward fold here. So option to take the right hand, gently place it on the right knee, Left hand can come out to reach for the knee, the shin, the top of the foot, or maybe the toes. Allow that front side of the body to just begin to fold in over that left leg. Saying hello to the back side. We'll find ourselves here for a minute and a half. Breathing here. Remembering we're searching for that five on a scale of one to 10, that yin edge. So if you're settling into a space and you're noticing that maybe it's causing a little pain in the lower back, back it off a bit. Slowly we will rise up. We'll just throw a little twist in here. So we'll take that right knee, bring it up, bring it to plant on the inside of that left knee, and then we'll find that twist opening to the right. So option here, left arm can wrap around that right leg, or we can take that right elbow to the outer edge. Just using it as a bit of leverage here to find a deeper twist, find that detoxifying, center send that right leg out nice and long we'll take that left foot to the inside of that right thigh 
sitting up nice and straight, feeling that tilt slightly in that pelvis, and then we'll begin to fold in, walking those hands to the knee or maybe to the shin. That right hand can come to that right foot. Left hand can press gently on that left knee as you begin to hinge in, saying hello to the back of that right leg. Breathing. Taking a moment here without judgment to observe how this side may feel different than the other, and that's okay. Maybe you can sink a little bit deeper here. Maybe you tried to reach for the toes on this side and couldn't find them. Just notice and breathe. to rise back up, lengthening out that spine upright, feeling those sits bones, and then we'll take that left knee, bring it up, sole that left foot to the inside of that right leg, and we'll find that twist to the opposite side. So using that leverage, maybe it's wrapping around or that elbow comes to the outside. center to find the last piece of the sequence. The last three minutes we'll spend in a butterfly pose. So I want you to notice how your body feels. Option here to leave a really big triangle so the ankles are further away from the sits bones or option to walk them in closer. Noticing how it feels here. If you have blocks or that blanket or that pillow, you can set them under the knees for that support if that feels good. Or if you're looking for that little bit of extra stretch, maybe you let the knees just flop out here. Again, we'll find this place for about three minutes. So option to stay upright, or if you want to send this stretch a little bit further into the lower back, you can begin to find yourself folding in. This could be a place where you take a block, find that forehead resting, Maybe you begin to build walking those hands under and just folding in here. Allow yourself the first 30 seconds of this pose to really explore, to really notice what your body needs, what, what your body wants. Knowing that we're stretching the inner thighs here, but there's the option to build into other places. We can bend into the back, the neck. Take what you need, leave what you don't. And then when you find that place where you can settle, bring that awareness back to the breath. Focus on sending that breath deep into those lower abdominals, pulling that belly button away from the spine, noticing that this might feel funny depending on if you're reclined or not, excuse me, if you're folded or not. Just a minute left. Mm -hmm. 
Release the jaw, pull the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. Allow the face to soften. Allowing everything that our body tends to want to keep tense to just relax. Take an inhale through the nose. Let it go out the mouth as you slowly begin to rise back up. Maybe slightly bouncing those knees, maybe taking the hands on the outer edges, pulling them together. Hands can come behind you, windshield wipering. are ready we will roll over and meet in a tabletop pose so hands are coming beneath the shoulders knees below the hips nice long flat back moving through here with your breath through some cats and cows so inhale tilts the tailbone up drops the belly lifts the gaze and then exhale as you tilt that tailbone back down lift the spine vertebrae by vertebrae and then let the head hang heavy Moving through here, awakening the spine as it feels good for you. Letting this move and evolve. It can become that snake-like movement. It be can become a little more dramatic if you want to press back to a child's pose and then lift all the way up through a cobra or up dog. Moving through here. We'll meet back in that tabletop pose when you are ready. Taking just a little bit of a shoulder opener stretch here. We'll root that left hand in. Inhale as we lift the right fingertips up toward the sky. Lift that chest. And then exhale as you thread those fingertips all the way under and through. Right shoulder, right cheek, find the earth. Left hand can stay where it is or reach out long in front of you. Or the option here to really take a big movement. Take that right arm, left arm right back behind you. Reach for that right hip, maybe the top of that right thigh. Close the eyes and settle in. Slow the breath, thinking about those nice deep exhales and inhales. slowly begin to take that left hand back beneath that left shoulder root it into the earth as we press in taking those right fingertips all the way up toward the sky you'll see the back side of my body as I reach the right fingertips up kick that right leg back finding a supported side plank reach those right fingertips back to the wall behind you open up that entire chest space feel that stretch from that left wrist all the way through those right fingertips breathe right hand comes all the way back down and through squaring everything out take a moment here maybe shake those hips out squaring everything down to the earth we'll root into the right hand lift the left fingertips up toward the sky and then as we exhale thread those fingertips all the way under and through left shoulder left cheek find the earth and then that option here right hand can reach out long or it can reach all the way back behind you, reaching for the top of that left thigh, settling in. Focus on your breathing.
Releasing that right hand to come back beneath that right shoulder. Press it into the earth. As we inhale, lift all the way up. We're gonna kickstand onto that right knee. Left fingertips reach up toward the sky. Finding that supported side plank. This time, remember, take those left fingertips. Reach back behind you. Feel that stretch from the right wrist through the left fingertips. Opening up that front side of the body. And then beginning to come back through, squaring it all off. Setting up for our next yin pose, we're moving into our pigeon pose. So we'll take that right knee, bring it all the way up to that right wrist. So I'll move my left hand so you can see bringing it up. And then I'm gonna help that right foot over so that it runs as close to parallel to the front of my mat as it can. Then I'll begin to tuck the toes on the left foot, inchworm that left leg back and slowly coming up onto my cupcake fingers. So we call that, because imagine a little cupcake beneath those fingers, lifting up nice and high, feeling the evenness in the hips. So if you're rolling into one hip more than the other, find yourself kind of coming through center. A block, rolled up blanket or pillow can be a nice place to set that one back right hip on if you'd like. And then when you are ready, we can come down to the palms, we can come down to the forearms, or we can come all the way down, allowing that forehead to find a block or the tops of the hands. As we find ourselves settling into our sleeping pigeon pose, is a practice that focuses on that connective tissue. If you've taken the class with me before, you've heard me say it many, many times. We really focus on that connective tissue in the hips. We can hold a lot of emotion in our hips. We can hold a lot of our experiences from our life there. So you might notice that when you're stretching into these spaces, sometimes the body is very resistant to stay important for you here to find your breath and to continue to breathe through these poses. Release any tension that you might feel in your body and begin to notice places where maybe you can soften in depending on where you are. Maybe it's softening of the shoulders or the fingertips. It can be simply something as simple as relaxing the face. than halfway there, less than 90 seconds to go. Notice where it's traveling. and then we'll roll over onto that right hip. 
I'm going to turn my body so I'm facing you. You can stay facing the direction you're in. We'll keep that right knee on bottom facing toward the front of our mat. We'll sweep that left leg around as we attempt to stack the knees here. So the biggest thing I want you to focus on is those sits bones rooting into the earth. So when you do put that sit bone down, you might notice that left knee is no longer stacked on top of the right. That's okay. We're still finding a hip stretch there. I want you to really focus on those hip bones down onto the earth. Now with our left leg on top, we'll take our left arm on bottom to find this shoulder stretch. So I will turn around so you can see what I'm doing. I'll take my left hand up my back, reaching toward my neck. My right hand will come up toward the sky, bend my right elbow to walk those fingertips in toward each other. There's a good possibility that your fingertips don't meet here. That's okay. Just find that stretch if you can. If you get here and you're like, this is not doing it for me and I don't enjoy this, that's okay. You have the option to maybe take an eagle arm. So left arm would come under, bend the arms, lifting up. Still finding a shoulder stretch, your choice, your option. Just stay here for a few more breaths. Slowly releasing the hands, maybe coming out of those eagle arm pose, if that's what you took. Shaking out the shoulders, getting those wiggles out. Reminds me of Ash and her kids yoga. Uncrossing the legs, taking those windshield wipers. And then we will meet back in that tabletop space once more showing some gratitude, some excitement that we have both of our legs to practice pigeon on this evening. So we'll set up in that nice tabletop. This time that left knee comes to that left wrist, float it up there. Use that right hand if you'd like to help that shin to close to parallel to the front of the mat as you can, and then inch worm that right leg back. Take this moment. Sometimes we're so tempted just to like melt into pigeon because we enjoy it so much. But take this moment to notice the hips. Maybe see if you can lift yourself up and feel the hips even. And then come down to those cupcake fingers. Feel the shoulders melt away from the ears. And then begin to find yourself folding in to find that place that we can find stillness for the next three minutes. <laughs> Reminding ourselves that that place could be different than the other side. No judgment, just embracing how one body can be totally different from side to side and how unique and how lovely that can be. Maybe taking this time, stealing the awareness from the breath for a moment and taking just a few breaths to think of three things that you're grateful for. They could be people, they could be things, they could be places, they could even be moments in your life, but take this time this time on your mat that you devote to yourself for that gratitude. than halfway there, noticing where you're feeling stretch. 
Notice if you want to take this moment to maybe sink in a little deeper to find a little bit deeper stretch, or maybe if you've exceeded that five on your scale of one to 10, you back it off. Again, I'll turn towards you, but all you'll need to do is swing that right leg around so it can begin to stack on top of the left. Focusing here on those sits bones coming down onto the earth and then attempting to stack the knees. Option here, if you don't like that one shoulder stretch, we'll start with eagle arms. That right arm can come under, make that X bend, lift the palms, shoulders should be at, the elbows should be at shoulder height. If you enjoy that other stretch, since the right leg's on top, the right arm will come up the back, reaching for the lower neck. Left arm will reach up toward the sky, bending and walking those fingertips in toward one another. This side for me is a little tighter, so I have to kind of really work to get my fingertips to touch. And we'll breathe. When you feel even from this side to the other, take your time, start releasing the arms out, shaking it out. And then we'll uncross the legs, giving them a wiggle. And then before we bring our practice down to the floor, we can take our, take our legs out nice and wide, that nice wide V. Right arm's gonna come to the inside of that right leg. Left fingertips are gonna sweep up overhead for a side bend here. Pull the toes on both of the feet in toward the body. So you're engaging the legs here, finding that side bend on the left side, pulling that left arm in, excuse me, that left shoulder back. Come back up through center. Feel that center nice and even. And then the left arm comes to the inside of that left leg. Right arm sweeps up overhead. Breathe, don't hold your breath here. Coming back through center, sweeping the legs back together, bending the legs. We'll find ourselves taking our legs up the wall. So I apologize that I did not tell you this sooner. If you have a place nearby that's clear, I mean, it can be just this clear. This is all I have right now. So just a place where you can take the sits bones up against the wall. So we'll start with just the hip bone up against the wall, and then we'll sweep the legs all the way up, finding ourselves coming into a supported candlestick here. So maybe you have to inform yourself in a bit to get those sits bones really close. Pull the toes in toward the face. I didn't give you warning, so we'll wait to start our timer for just a moment. Feeling the backs of the shins, the backs of the thighs on the wall. And then we'll begin to settle in for three minutes. So here you can imagine that maybe there's a nice flat, I don't know, cinder block on your feet and it's causing the toes to pull in toward the face. So we're stretching out the backs of the legs. 
Releasing that tailbone down toward the earth. Just letting you know it feels super weird to be talking and not looking at the phone, but that's okay. Even though we're pulling those toes into the face, see if you can let the thighs disengage. We're focusing on the backs of the legs here. If it's comfortable for the hands, you can rest one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. I notice that can help my breathing because I really focus on sending my breath down to that lower hand to lift it up, fill it all the way up with air. And then as I exhale, exhale allowing that hand to float back down to the earth. more than halfway there knowing anytime we lift the feet up above the head up above the heart we're taking that blood that sits in the lower extremities all day and we encourage it to begin to make its journey throughout our body it's allowing a sense of calmness here This is a great place to go if you're feeling anxious or maybe before bed, if you're feeling a little high energy, take your legs up the wall, let your body know it's okay to begin to wind down. Take an inhale through the nose. As you exhale it out the mouth, begin to bend the knees, bringing the soles of the feet onto the wall or whatever surface you're on, walking them in as if you were pulling your knees in toward your chest. From here, we'll take the arms out to a T and allow the legs to fall over to the left. If that means you scoot your sits bones out away from the wall, that's totally fine. Go ahead and do that. We're just looking for this side twist here. ringing out those digestive organs. We'll find the counter pose to this as we begin to walk those feet back up through neutral so those knees are in toward the chest and then we'll allow them to fall open toward that opposite side you can gaze over that opposite shoulder if that feels good Lifting those knees back up through center. Maybe taking a moment here and taking a happy baby as we pull those knees in toward the armpits, grabbing the outer blades of the feet. Imagine we're pressing the ceiling away with those nice flat feet. You can find the option here to stay still or maybe rock side to side, straightening out one leg and then the other.
And then we'll slowly begin to listen to our bodies and what they would like for Shavasana. So if legs up the wall felt good for you, remembering here, you don't have to engage those toes. You can just release it all up. You can find yourself there. Or maybe you find yourself coming all the way around onto your backs. Please don't leave. Shavasana is one of the most important parts of our practice. And I make this joke a lot, I know, but I'm gonna say you guys don't have anything, don't have much else to do right now. So hang out for Shavasana, please. It's tempting to just say, okay, my practice is over. No, just hang out. I'm gonna find myself in a supported fish. So allow yourself wherever you are to let go of your practice. Let go of anything that no longer serves you. Allowing yourself to just find the mat, the wall, the blocks, the blanket, whatever it is. This place, this time to let go of whatever is making you feel heavy. Releasing that tension that could still remain in the body. Let the jaw release. Pull the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. The eyes sink heavy into their sockets. That third eye space relaxes as you find your well-deserved yoga rest in Shavasana. Slowly begin to reawaken your body. Maybe that starts by lengthening out the breath. Wiggle the fingers and the toes. Roll the wrists and the ankles. Maybe allow the head to fall side to side. whatever movement feels right here what feels good to begin to make that movement bigger and bigger until you find yourself bringing yourself all the way up and around to find that comfortable seat that seat where our practice began tonight Noticing if the body feels different here. Noticing what has changed. Hands can rest on the knees, cup in the lap, or come through to heart center. So we take this moment to bow our chin in as a sign of gratitude. Reflecting back on that message from the beginning of class and the importance of expressing gratitude each day, especially during those times where it may be hard to find those things that you're grateful for. 
knowing there's gratitude for this amazing soul shine community that even a world pandemic cannot keep apart. Gratitude for this amazing yoga practice. Gratitude for these amazing bodies who day after day support us, take care of us, give us this place to live. And most importantly, gratitude for this breath. And as you inhale, lifting your chin, allowing your light to shine out into the world. Maybe that light to be that beacon of hope to maybe help that other person out there that maybe needs that little reminder of gratitude. Knowing that the love, the light, the strength within me is so thankful and so humbly bows to that love, light, strength in each one of you. Thank you so much for joining my practice tonight. Namaste. Thank you so much for coming tonight, you guys. It was great to do some yin with you. I will be back next Tuesday to do some yin as well. Uh, friendly reminder that uh, to support the Soul Shine community, we are selling some really awesome clothing. Check it out on our Facebook page. Get your orders in. I know that I am really looking at that tank top and that one slouchy tee. So get out there, check the stuff out. Um, and we look forward to seeing you guys soon. Have a great rest of the evening.